All right, so uh, according to reports, uh, Bernard Sander, um, failed presidential candidate, <clears throat> that was probably cheated, but anyway, wait, failed presidential candidate nonetheless, uh, Bernard Sander, current budget committee chair, Chairman Bernard, is uh, talking about $15 an hour. I just got some clips that he's been reposting on his Senate account. Uh, so let's watch, let's, uh, let's get into this, and let's see what he's got to say. The amendment which I am offering today to raise that minimum wage to $15 an hour is uh, co-sponsored uh, by Majority Leader Schumer, and I thank his, him for his strong support. Senator Par Patty Murray, who is the chair of the Health Education Labor Committee, Senator Ron Wyden, who is the chair of the Finance Committee, and many others in this chamber. Uh, in fact, chamber. this amendment is similar in many ways to the legislation that I have offered which is co-sponsored by 38 members of the Senate. And let us not forget, this legislation was passed in the House, and I want to thank my friends and colleagues in the House Progressive Caucus for their extraordinary leadership on this issue. This amendment is supported by some 300 national organizations, including the AFL-CIO, and virtually all of the major unions in our country. And I want to thank in particular the SEIU, one of the great unions in America, who have led this effort for years in terms of the fight for 15, where people working in McDonald's and Burger King have gone out in, on strike and said, no, we can't make it on 10 bucks an hour, 11 bucks an hour. And I want to thank the SEIU. And because this legislation will help workers all across the board. Now, I just want to remind everyone. The people like Joe Manchin and, like, the Republicans, they've never, ever had a conversation with a worker. Ever. In their whole lives. They've never. Anyone who's ever making, like, minimum wage has never gotten, a, like, an in-depth conversation with these motherfucking aristocrats. Bernie, on the other hand, he only talks to these people. So you just have to understand where this is coming from. This is a pretty good speech so far. I'll just play the rest of this clip. Why not? Significantly help women who are unfortunately forced into low income work more than the general population more than men and it will disproportionately help african americans and latinos who disproportionately are forced into low income work this legislation is supported not only by 300 organizations but by groups like the leadership conference on civil and human rights they understand that if we're going to improve the standard of living of the African-American community, we ought to raise that minimum wage. It is supported by the National Organization for Women. Because again, this raising the minimum wage is a women's issue in a very significant way. Not totally, believe me, a lot, a lot of men out there who are working for 9, 10, 11 bucks an hour, but disproportionately it impacts women. It is supported by UNIDOS and other Latino organizations supported by the American Association of University Women, supported by Indivisible, Justice for Migrant Women, the National Domestic Workers Alliance, and the National Women's Law Center. And here is the simple truth, and that is that in the richest country in the history of the world, we can no longer tolerate millions of our workers being unable to feed their families because they are working for starvation wages. And that is not what I say, although I do say it, it's what the President of the United States says, who very- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold up. I'm sorry, that was gold. <laughs> although I do say it. Although I do say it, it's what the President <laughs> of time, the United States who feed their families because they are working for starvation wages. And that is not what I say, Although I do say it, it's what the President of the United States says, who very, very strongly supports raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, and I thank him for his support. You know, when we look at the economy, people look at the stock market, they look at a whole lot of indices out there. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, what is going on in the lives of ordinary people? And it is not acceptable to me that a half of our people live in paycheck to paycheck and millions of people are trying to get by on 9, 10, 11 bucks an hour. An hour. 
And you know what? You can't do that. You can't do that in Vermont, and you can't do it in California, you can't do it in Minnesota. You can't do that. Say West Virginia. Come on, say West Virginia. And our job is to make sure that we have an economy that works for all and not just the few, and that in order to do that, we are going to have to raise that minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. Frankly, it is disgraceful that Congress has not passed an increase in the minimum wage since 2007. Think of all the things that have transpired since then, but Congress has not raised the minimum wage since 2007. And the reality is that the minimum wage has lost over 30% of its purchasing power since 1968. Minimum wage is worth a lot less now than it used to be. That's pretty good. We got a second clip here. Let's play. It's only 20 seconds. Yes, and I want to thank in particular the SCIU. One of the nah, it's just a little, it's a little clip for them. All right, cool. Um, there you go. Bernie's going in. He's killing it. Uh, of course, uh, speaking of killing it, Joe Biden has killed the minimum wage. Uh, that's not probably go not going to happen. Uh, we'll see, though. I mean, like, literally anything is possible, right? But, like, let's, you know, curtail our expectations. Um, and uh, let's, you know, again, Joe Biden and Kamala could have fought for the $15 minimum wage. They made a decision not to because to them, doing a little bit of work, well, whatever, I won't do it. Hey, it's not going to affect their pay. I'd like to see if Kamala Harris and Joe Biden would get by on seven twenty-five an hour. I think, in my estimation, I think all elected officials should have to work on the minimum wage. That's what I think. If I were ever to uh, gain a, uh, you know, a position of power, I would advocate for the salaries of all congressional, uh, you know, senators, everyone who's an elected official, governors, presidents, they should all be paid a 15 or rather a 725, whatever the minimum wage is. That's what they should be paid because then maybe they would have a little bit more of an interest in what the minimum wage is. Just maybe because how they do a hell of a lot less work than people that work at Burger King or at a grocery store or people that work, you know, at whatever the fuck. They, may, they do a lot less work. They go into their little Senate chamber, air-controlled Senate chamber. They sit around and fart up the fucking place for fucking, I don't know, three, four hours a day. And then they go home. Sometimes they take weeks off. They get multiple paid vacations every year. They do a hell of a lot less work. Let's see them work at $7.25 an hour. Then maybe they'll have longer Senate sessions and congressional sessions. Maybe they'll do more work during those sessions. Maybe. Anyway, so shout-outs to Bernard. Bernard Sander, everyone going in.